Hi guys, this is a video for my grade nines primarily, but the grade tens need to know this too. This is going to be on your upcoming periodic table quiz and some other things, so pay attention. First of all, you need to know the element symbol and what it means. The element symbol has a number in this position on the bottom left. That's called the atomic number, and it tells you how many protons. So the element identity is determined by the number of protons. If there's only one proton, it's a hydrogen atom. If there's two protons, it's a helium. If it's uh, got three protons, it's a, it's a lithium atom. The other number on to, to the top left is the mass number. The mass number includes protons plus neutrons. Top right is reserved for writing a charge if there is one. And now if you have a, a deficit of electrons, you have a positive charge. If you have extra electrons, you're going to have a negative charge in that spot. But you always write the charge on the top right uh, position uh, next to the symbol. The symbol is always written with an uppercase for the first letter, lowercase for the second letter. You only have three letters for the numbers, for the, the elements that don't have a name yet. So they just gave it a, a name in Latin. For example, 100, the 104th element was called 104ium in Latin, which comes out as unilquadium. But that wasn't the name that stuck. It, it, now it's called Rutherfordium. And then 105 is called Dubnium and so on. They've changed the names, but it took a while for the scientists to agree on what to call the different elements. The bottom right space is reserved for writing, for answering the question, how many of the atoms? So for example, if you write H2O, the two applies to the hydrogen. You see it's on the bottom right of the hydrogen symbol. It means there's two hydrogens there. If there's one, you don't bother writing it. It's understood. Okay, so the, the positions are reserved. They're, each one is reserved for a particular type of information. Let's just practice a little bit to see if you picked up on what I'm saying regarding carbon. Now, there's three isotopes of carbon that are commonly known. Carbon, six, uh, carbon 12, 13, and 14. See, they all have six protons. But the most, uh, nat the largest naturally occurring carbon is carbon 12. It's about 99% of the carbon that you find in the world. About 1%, a little less than 1% is carbon 13, and way less than 1% is uh, carbon 14. It's actually just trace amounts. And... What's the difference? Well, carbon-12 has six neutrons and six protons. Carbon-13 has six protons and seven neutrons, and carbon-14 has eight neutrons. So these are what you call isotopes. It's the same element. It has the same chemical properties. The only difference being that these are heavier versions of the same element because they have extra neutrons. Uh, in the periodic table, I expect you to know for... Monday, those of you who have a test, uh, sorry, this Wednesday, you're going to have a test, if I remember correctly. You'll go with what I said in class. I'm just I'm getting confused between the two classes now. But you should know all the numbers along here are called the period numbers. They go, they go from 1 to 7. This is also 6, 7 for the lanthanides and the actinides. You should know that the left side of the periodic table is composed of metals, the right side is non-metals, and the stair-step line is where the metalloids are located. You should also know the existence of S, P, D, and F blocks, and they have particular significances later on, which we'll talk about. You should also know your group numbers, 1 through 18, along the top. So that concludes what I wanted to tell you about the periodic table. There's one other thing I'd like you to memorize, and I'll give you the... Uh, mnemonic for it, which is a, a memory device, a way of learning how to do it. It's the strong acids and the strong bases. I'll show you how to build it. I already appended a video to your homework today, but it doesn't hurt to repeat it. So the strong acids, what you do is you set up no, so, claw, claw, cold, brie. So no, so, claw, claw, cold, brie. Sounds silly, but it's easy to remember. Then you write three, four, three, four, and you put a bunch of H's. And on the second one, you put two H's. So nitric, sulfuric, chloric, perchloric, hydrochloric, hydrobromic, hydriotic acid. For the strong bases, it goes Na, Curb, 
Kasserboff. And you put OH after each one. Those are all the strong bases and there are no others. Uh, there, you put two alkali. So these are group two uh, alkaline earth elements. And that's why they take two hydroxides because hydroxide has a minus one charge. And these are group one alkali metals. And so they have a plus one charge and they take only one hydroxide. So sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, rubidium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide, strontium hydroxide, barium hydroxide. Make sure you memorize those for the next class, guys, and I'll see you then.